Well, I'm happy to be here because people here are talking about adaptation to sea level rise and how to uh, think about thriving in a future with seismic events. And that's what we work on in the Bay Area in San Francisco. So it's a great place to come and share ideas and talk about what you've all learned and what we've learned in California. It's a beautiful landscape. It's incredible to fly over the Alps and come in over the river with the very blue water, the braided river, and uh, then see the landscape here with the ocean and the estuary. It's a very beautiful place. And it seems to me like the kind of place you'd want to invest in and find a way to really thrive as part of this landscape. Yeah, well, a lot of us have cities around the world. There are all these cities that are where rivers meet the sea. And here you are as a city where two rivers meet the sea. Um, and you have a high water table, which a lot of places have. Um, and that creates really special challenges of coping with flooding, trying to improve water quality, and uh, create habitat for the biodiversity that all of us appreciate in these landscapes. So it's actually very similar to a lot of other places outside the Netherlands. One of the things we've learned is that landscapes are really powerful. They can be muscular, they can do work for us. They're not just something to look at or to recreate in. So when we build wetlands, they can actually protect us from waves. Um, when we build ponds, we can redirect groundwater or canals we can use to redirect uh, flooding. And we, I think, will really benefit from that lesson thinking about Christchurch, thinking about San Francisco, because landscape is something that the price of it doesn't fluctuate in the same way that concrete and steel fluctuates on the open international market. We have more control over our destiny if we think about our future as something we manipulate landscape to create than when we think about buying glass and steel and concrete from other parts of the world. We're expecting an earthquake very like the earthquake that you all had and we're trying to prepare for the event. So we'd like to learn from what you all have gone through, but we are seeing a rising water table um, and we're seeing more flooding of our transportation infrastructure um, and we're seeing uh, a housing shortage. We have a very extreme housing shortage right now. So we're trying to figure out um, how to adapt to sea level rise while we create housing and think about how this rising water table is going to affect us in our seismic region. We are worried about it and trying to figure out how to learn from places that have already gone through it. It was interesting because the red zone here, this area that's op been opened up by the earthquake, uh, reminds me of New Orleans, where there were some 60,000 housing parcels that were opened up by the hurricane. Uh, but it seems like it has so much potential. It's, been cleaned up very well. Obviously people have a lot of place attachment still about these uh, neighborhoods, but there's so much potential to do things here. We were talking about whether wetlands could be used to clean stormwater and that some groups would really like to see that happen. Uh, that totally works. We know that that can be done and that those wetlands can provide habitat for animals like these swans and lots of other kinds of birds and animals. Uh, at the same time, it makes us feel like we really live in a landscape that we belong to. So that's, I think that's huge potential to think about the way this zone can become kind of like kidneys of the city, like it's going to clean the water and then the water goes into the river and out to the ocean much cleaner. And how much more satisfying it would be to live in a place that feels higher quality 